to the Ross Patterson Revolution. Brought to you by GhostBed.com. <laughs> I put my arm on the armrest and it was there but did not work for me in the way that it was supposed to work. How you doing, James? I am good. Obviously, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Um, it appears tell. as if you almost fell off your chair right when we started. You can just leave that in if you want. Why not? <laughs> Start with that on the video show. Everyone saw it. Man, uh, I'm glad. So I'm, I'm glad you're alive. Yep. Obviously, I'm good. Obviously, you're good. Armrest is right there. Yep. Boom. So, so you know what you are doing. Are good. 400 and something shows and you've never been better. Never been better. Yes. Um yeah. Gosh, I've seen you a lot this week, huh? <laughs> 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 it's like we just keep hanging out. I know. We're not our marriage is not used to this. Well, I I'm fine with it, Jabes. No, I'm fine with it. I'm you just You seem to have a problem. No, with I'm me. fine with it. Being around all the time all right. in your face. Here we go. I'm kidding. Uh, we've been recording extra shows because we are going on the Drinking Bros podcast cruise, and we're little doing lady it. is going to stowaway. Yeah, uh, I did not pay for a ticket, but I will be in a suitcase, <laughs> right, with the Listerine. that we've emptied out and put vodka in. Don't bust us. <laughs> Don't need we it on a cruise. Plenty of booze. Why do Plenty people always do that on cruises then? Uh, I know my friends went a long time ago and they like had to find all these different containers to put vodka in. Booze, yeah. Well. Is it expensive? Are my friends yeah. ghetto? Yes. Is that what you're saying? It, 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 it's, there's a yes for both of those, right? It depends on what you're getting on the cruise, um, booze-wise. Okay. Um, but no, I wouldn't say the prices are any that much different are they or gonna have a mid-range r- thick red oh yeah okay yeah 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 you're so good no need to you can drink that in the middle of the afternoon on the cruise no i might go pina really Colata. really ah. no, i have to do one just because that would be funny you know i love them right i know you do because you love a sweet fruity umbrella drink we when we went to the Bahamas, every There's time a reason. they would bring the drinks out, it would be like I would get a glass of wine or a nor- vodka soda something, yeah, and yeah. he would have the big in the pineapple with all the things, and they'd try to hand his drink to me always yep. Yep. because that's usually what you would like in your mind. We're still old school. Should be for ladies, maybe. Should they're still old school? They're still trapped in the past. Yeah. Yep. What they don't know about Mr. Ross is he's very, he's, you know, Here's, there's a good he's very reason. secure. There's a good reason for it, right? Yeah, that you like super sweet drinks. No. There's no other. I don't like to wait. So, uh, obviously, you have one drink, you start partying, and you're like, oh, man, I, I don't want to keep going back to the bar. So, I'll, I'll get a double shot, maybe, maybe triple in there. Uh, the best thing to cut that with. So it's you're just not drinking straight liquor, obviously, uh-huh. is a is a pina. Mm-hmm. Um, it's some form of colada like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Long Island iced tea. You need it cut with something if you want something stronger. Right. Right. Because midday partying for me, like I'm one of the best there is. Some say I was created for it, uh, but I don't want to keep going back and forth to the bar. I would rather just let's just knock it out with one shot here. OK, sure. So give me a pina. And that's going to cut those three shots of rum real nice for the doctor. Right. So. And they love it. The waiters love it when I say, give me a peener. Yeah. I need another peener. One more peener, sir. The most annoying person to and then bartenders. I, yeah. And even in the it's Bahamas, I have a, I have a tradition where I usually call some, after my second or third, I call them uh, hombres. 
or seniors. Um, and that's a totally different country. But uh, I feel like yeah, those they definitely don't speak Spanish there. are universal terms, though, mm -hmm. Jesse. So uh, when I get my peeners um, from my hombres, that's why I'm doing it. That's well, why I'm doing that. You know I like to stay on brand. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I will, I think, have to drink a red. Probably. Because, you know, mm -hmm. that's what the people are going to want yeah. from me, you know? If I show up, you know, at the cruise talking to some, some listeners, yeah, some drinking bros, and I don't have a thick red in my hand, they're going to be confused. Real confused. So, again, I'm doing it for them. Yep. I may have a pina. Yeah. Not a peener. Okay. But I will have a pina. Yeah. Colata. Get a peener, dude. They're different. Uh, I want to also give a shout to the Bahamas, man. That sucks what yeah. happened there. That fucking storm was insane. I, they finally had footage today. And again, we're taping these in the past. So if you're listening to these in the following week, know that, you know, I'm sure they'll have better footage then. But we're catching this live. And by then they today. should have, uh, you know, updates on what happened in North Carolina or Florida or South Carolina or wherever. I, we're fine. The winds are like 60. It's like big deal, you know? Big deal. We didn't go anything. Any, we had nothing what, what happened in the Bahamas. Um, and that was fucking insane, man. Happened, there yeah. was a little uh, town. Um, it has. It has happened. Oh, okay. On the weather. We're good mm -hmm. on this whole mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a little town in Florida that got destroyed like this. Right. Um, I forget the name of the hurricane. Uh, and that... that was the most vicious thing I'd ever seen. Right. And this, this, this almost topped it. I mean, I can't imagine a storm staying just for four you. days yeah. straight in the same exact place. Jesus Christ. I mean, it's nuts. Because we, look, we've gone through our fair share of hurricanes out here. And I mean, that last one, Florence, ripped off half the goddamn side of our house. And that was... That's the only one I've been in that's done, like, actual... Massive damage. Damage. Yeah. Me personally. Eight months it took to get that replaced. But it was siding. You know, a lot of it was siding. Uh, there was some plywood. and I mean, look, if it would have gone one more inch in, it would have been total devastation, obviously. We'd replace the carpets and, uh, and some yeah, other things. No, we didn't get any. But I'm just saying, like, in this area, the, like, as far as people still rebuilding. Right. And, like, people that we know being in shelters and stuff, like, that was... The most devastating. Correct. Not now, the siding on our house. I'm saying like. No, no, no. But, this but, but this is what I'm saying. This is my point to all of this. Quadruple all of that. Where these people lost their houses. They lost cars. Yes. Mexico Beach, Florida. That was it. Michael. Michael Hurricane Michael. Yeah. Um, that was the craziest one I'd ever seen. And then, and then this one appears from the footage today. That it's like that. And it's like, man, I think we were. Our, what was it? A three for us? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was one day and it did stay around for, you know, a longer period of time than usual, mm -hmm. they said. But imagine that quadrupled and staying there for I don't, it was a five when it hit. And then for four days, like I don't I don't think that anything is it looks it doesn't look like that much is salvageable out of that. I don't even yeah. know what you do at that point Yeah. Um, to some of those islands there. I mean, the cars were ripped in half. The houses. It just looked completely flattened like a bomb went off. Yeah. So it sucks because we've been down there and it's great and it's the people are amazing and uh, fuck, man. So uh, going through that, watching that helicopter footage this morning, I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Um, complete devastation. Even that storm chaser guy, that famous storm chaser who goes to all of this shit and like he'll find ground zero of where the storm is going to be. Somehow chip, weasel his way in there. Chip. North Kitson? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Chip North Kitson. Yeah. Sinson. So he. Was so he's been to all of these things for years. Um, and this one, he was just like. No, thank you. He was in it and he goes, man, I, that, this is the worst I've ever seen. And I didn't know if I was going to come out of this one alive. And he goes, I don't, I didn't even know what to, what you would tell people for how bad this devastation is. And this guy lives for this shit. I mean, he goes yeah. to every single one of these things. Um, so. Crazy. 
Casey, no, not talking about Jim Cantor. We saw him in a bar, actually. I'm producer Jamie shouting out Jim Jim Cantor. Um, that fuck, we saw that guy at the in New Orleans at the bar doing shots. And he was he the one that was throwing the napkin and saying, uh, uh, "Yeah, yeah." What was the name of it? Uh, that that hurricane. Yeah, the New Orleans one. Uh, it didn't it didn't happen? So it didn't, you know. Yeah, but it had a name. It did have a name, and he just threw a napkin across the bar and into a fan. And anybody, he goes, Whoa, anybody in, in hurricane, the studio, whatever, yeah. yeah. Um, and it was like Barry, 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 no, Barry, and no. he would like throw throw napkins, at the fan going above, and the napkin would like go across, wasted. He was wasted in his weather man yeah, outfit. Yeah, because they have the hoodie. Yeah, they have the uh, the Whatever. weather Wind channel thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Barry, no. Yeah, and that guy's <laughs> been to a lot of them, but these storm chasers will get in, hunker in, stay there, like it, you know, it's it's crazy. And I, I, I don't know why. Like, what's he going to do with his footage? Maybe a documentary? Documentary. Be cool, maybe. But to see all this shit from the inside of it, because he's actually getting inside the storm yeah. like, and then not leaving, where you're just like, oh, boy. Right. Um, Jim Cantor is just like, look, let's find the deepest puddle we I'll can. I'll stand in there. Yeah, I'll and then stand in there. Let's go to the bar. Let's go to the bar afterwards. Usually, yeah, which yeah. we know now. So... Uh, wild man, but uh, I don't know. I don't know what you would do for that, to be honest. Other than rebuild the entire island, I guess. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if, you, but I don't know if you do. Uh, at that point, there's um, so many little islands. So I mean, what I know. Are you, which one are you talking about? You well, know what that, I mean? Well, no, a, a, any of them because yeah. they're they're all not very big. So yeah, they're do not you very rebuild? Big, but... And the erosion, because a lot of people don't realize, like after after hurricanes like this, because we went through it. With, with ours twice right. um, The first one didn't hit that hard yeah, so But these, the erosion You lose half your sand So these islands are actually A different shape now Which is crazy to yeah. think uh, So yeah I mean Do they rebuild? I don't know I don't know either um, Because how do you bring tourism back And all that stuff Like that's a tough one uh, I, pff, Man I've, I've never seen anything like it Um also, we want to go to a lighter note. Never seen anything like the Bad Boys trailer, the new Bad Boys trailer. <laughs> Kidding. Here's what I want to say. <laughs> go ahead, James. <laughs> Fire away. Black people yep. are just superior specimen. Yes. Uh, physically, mm -hmm. just they, they keep. Yeah, you are know you talking about I mean? Will Smith? I'm talking about both of them, to be honest with you. Well, Will Smith still looks like I, that guy stopped. He looks aging the exact same. Twenty years ago, Martin Lawrence like he looks maybe a little bit older, a little bigger, but definitely little bigger. not. You know, when white people try and redo stuff, yeah. it is just sucked and put and filled and yes. everything, and you're like, I'm back, yeah, I'm the same, <laughs> and like you're like, no, you're really not. Like, yeah. I mean, I can kind of see like in there how you used to look, but these motherfuckers. I mean, they're just better at everything I know. physically. Physically, yeah. Physically, they are. Um, and they, they look, black don't crack. We've said this all the time. But just looking at I Will mean, Smith in this, he's this thing, I know. Still it's crazy. Probably doing all the stunts. Probably. You know what I mean? He, the, they're all Tom Cruise. Yeah. Right? Well, we have, we're down to, let's face it, we're, we're down, down to, to Tom, Cruise. Tom Cruise. And that is about it. And even him, I heard in the last one, I didn't, or. Look, actually, scratch that. We'll see in Top Gun. Yes, next summer. But from what I saw, you know, you can tell. You can tell. Yeah, he's getting older. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think he's the only old. one to beat it thus far, uh, as far as the white man's side goes, is uh, probably B. Pitt at this point. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Because I look at Clooney and it's like, you know. No, Clooney is a dorky ass old man taking his kids to the park. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. And that happened very quickly. Very fast. Very fast. It's like the pants are hot over the belly button all of a sudden. Can I tell you when I think it happened? I think it was the motorcycle accident. And when it you go through. before that. Well, here's the thing. He, so he's gone through surgeries before that, right? And then this one was like, hey, man, all the shit you had broken and sprained and things in the past, like, mm -hmm. we're just going to magnify that, and you're going to be an old man now, and that's, that's it. You're kind of done. 
Um, can I tell you my theory on it? Uh-huh. So I think he's always been dork patrol. Not true. He talks, but look, look. look. Okay. The way that he talks now is the exact same he always has. His like dumb little jokes, his little laughs, his looks down, brown, brown, brown. His like, I don't know what you're talking about thing has always done that. But he used to be real hot doing it. Do right. you know what I mean? Right. And so you're just like, oh my God, he's so like dorky, but like sexy and hot daddy. And now he's still doing this, the same, you know, aw shucks. Yeah. But now it really is like, oh, shucks. Ah, oh, shucks. Yeah, you're, yeah, a, yeah. you're a dad. Yeah, man. you're a dad. Like you're, a, a, you're a grandfather. You're a grandfather because he's not even, he, he has always been a daddy. Yes. Since he was 36. Oh, uh, maybe younger. Maybe younger. He has always been a daddy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so now he's gone where most people are going into daddy status. He is now. Right. Zaddy. Yeah. Grand, grand. Uh, Graddy. Graddy. Yeah, he's he's gone <laughs> Graddy now. Is, is what Gra- you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah, gone yeah, Granddaddy. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, it's depressing for me because I'm white and it's gonna happen to me. And um, yeah, well, you should. I'm more depressed for me. It happens worse for white ladies. It's true. That is very true. And guys can go all the way up to how old is Clooney? Uh, he's got to be near sixty at this point. Anybody? Yeah, he's got to be 60, 60, I would say at this point. He's I know Brad be. Pitt is like fifty-five. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, look, if you can, uh, 60 is a good run. He's 58 50. years old. George Clooney is 58. So, yeah, uh, look, that's a good, that's a great run. What the fuck? Yeah, so I'm just saying, like, once you hit 50, I guess you'll have eight years of it before you go grand. Yeah. Dad. Yeah. And I think that's about right, where it's like, hey, man, you want to have your affairs in order. If you're doing something for a living, that you have mm-hmm. to look great at, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think you should have your affairs in order by 60 at that point. Definitely. Yeah. Or you can, like go, this. Bruce, you can go Bruce Stern. Ugh. Just keep it Come going. Come on, right. man. Come on. He just keeps it going right into the old No one's man. going Dern at this point. I'm not old doing that. Old man status. I'm not doing that. Uh, you know what? You, you know who else saying. is beating it? Actually, is Howard Stern. Howard Stern yeah, looks great, yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's 66 years old. That's and his true. interviews... Really fucking sharp, man. That's true. That's true. Um, I had a conversation with somebody the other day, and they said, "Who would you like to? What do you hope happens with all this stuff?" Right? And I said, "I wanted to be stern in the end. You know, like mm-hmm. that it would it would be fantastic." Right. His interviews to this day, because you because somebody mentioned, well, he's sixty six and he's you know he's going to retire soon or should or whatever, and I was like, I don't know, man. I I've listened to his interviews over the last couple months. Still the same, man. Like, it's a different yeah. vibe. He's not doing the crazy shit that we're doing on Drinking Bros anymore. But also, if you can get the guests that you're getting, fuck, man. I, that's more interesting to me. And they're going to answer everything you, you ask, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know if he's going to slow down. Like, he keeps shit pretty sharp, man. Um, but he's been able to do it. Yeah. He has. You're right. Uh, but very few. You're right. Very few. You, I think you have to make that transition where it's just Kurt Russell. And what did I say about, uh, yeah. 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 He's and done you it. just have to lean in, like grow the long gray hair. Yeah. Relax, drink wine. You know, he wears like the dorky shoes yeah. with the cargo shorts. Because when I see Dennis Quaid rolling around with that little 26 year old or whatever, I'm like, man, you, you've. Then it goes tragic, yes. right? Or no. when you try and like remake a movie that you made 20 years ago, right? No. Then it's tragic. Well, you got to take me. that money, I think. You know? <laughs> and I don't, I would, I would argue that they are not even thinking of it that way. That they're like, yep. Yep. Still got it, right? We have some friends, we won't say who, but they were on some big TV shows in the past. And uh, I asked them privately, I was like, hey, man, if, if, they wanted to remake this thing, you know, reboot it and you'd be the dad or, you know, mm-hmm, you'd be the mom mm-hmm, on it mm-hmm. and, and do this all over again. Would you do that and go back to the glory days? Oh, I mean, without hesitation, each of them were like, yep, yep sign me yep, up. Where's that yep. paycheck? Mm-hmm, Where mm-hmm, is that mm-hmm. money at? And I wouldn't, I wouldn't fault them for it. Um, I'm not going to go see this by the bad boys. The new bad boys trailer just dropped. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to go see this in theaters right. when it's on FX or whatever. I'll watch it. Sure. Because <laughs> let's face it. 
I'm I not, would want to not... see it just for the spectacle of some of two people staying. I mean, keeping that well. Yeah. Uh, as if they're cryogenically frozen, right? Wow. Will, Will Smith, Smith, he might be. In particular, where it's just like, are you fucking kidding me? It's crazy. It's absolutely crazy. And they would be the people, those two, Jada and him, would be the people that took all the stuff, right? Give yeah. me all, Give me all the things to stay this young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They would take them, all the potions, all the witches. If you can afford it, why not? Fuck. It's great. It's great. Uh, Jennifer Aniston, Jay Anis, dude. Take it if you can. If, if you can afford it and do it, fuck yeah, why not, man? Why not? Now, if you're getting stretched out and all that other scary. shit, like, if you got to go Nicole Kidman, because you don't know whether she was going to come back from, from all her shit, like. Settled very nicely. It did. I mean, but it took, a, it took in, a few years. It did. It took a few years. And so, Daryl Hannah is another one that. I, I believe it's Hannah. For a while, hush. <laughs> God. <laughs> For a while, she was puffed and pushed and really, you know, yeah, yeah. did not settle for a very long time. And then I saw her in person uh -huh. with Neil Young because they're dating at Deer Lodge yeah, in Ojai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, damn. like you see her and she's like, you know, stars. It's so weird that like even if you can you, like talk shit about them on TV or whatever, like oh, they're not. I don't know about them. If you see them in person. Sweatpants, it doesn't matter. They're striking. They're just a, more striking than anyone else, right? They're not yeah. normal. Yeah. That's why they were chosen yes. for this. And so you see her walking, and it's like, yeah. it's a striking situation. And she looked great. Oh, yeah, so yeah, it yeah. settled. She went into hiding with Neil Young. She's probably just drinking, yeah, you playing know who, songs at night. You know who I always thought was hot, but I just kind of disappeared? Um was Kim Basinger. You remember her? Oh my God. So hot, dude. And she was married to Alec Baldwin. And, you know, Baldwin Famously moved on a to a 28-year-old as well. Uh, was she a yoga instructor or some bullshit? Uh -huh. uh, whatever. But I, I've, we haven't seen Kim Basinger. I, the last time I saw her was an 8 Mile, I think. And Yeah. She still looks... She's a very... And, you know, i got to sympathize with her. Empathize just basically look in the mirror she's a very white woman yeah blonde woman yeah and that does not work out well <laughs> you know what i mean it's very hard to make that work and i think the only way to do it we'll see is to not do all that stuff is to literally just go with it uh we've talked about this before on the show when do you know that point though i don't think you do it's like an athlete you never know that point to, to walk away and say no hey, no man. i'm saying go with age be like a, be like a i'm not talking about being in the movies or anything like that i'm saying just no, like but in it, general it, in as life, far as getting yes. stuff pulled and done and da 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 but the hard thing is if you're on camera and you do if that you're for on a living camera, if you're on camera that's the that you never know what what point that is or, or where it could go wrong but uh, We'll see. We'll see. Looking at Will Smith, though, I'm, look, I'm not going to see this movie, but uh, I don't, I don't blame it. you for taking the, the paycheck, guys. I don't at all. Uh, but he looks great. Jesus Christ, man. Yeah, uh, why way wouldn't to do they? It. They look awesome. Way to do it. Yeah, you know, the, this script and all that shit, like, they're just pumping these out now. Any reboot from any year, like, chances are you're going to, you're going to fucking remake it. There's a shot. There's a yeah. shot out there. Uh, I want to talk about Scarlett Johansson. She popped up today. She popped, I she bet you do. Popped her little head up today. Um, <laughs> I bet you do want to talk about her. No. Um, she, she dated a friend of ours. Like, yeah. No. Can't do that. Up to, you know. Anyways, Scarlett Johansson um, came out and defended Woody Allen today, which was... Whoopsie daisy. That is... Huh. A number one. I was uh, surprised about that. She and said what I, is she defending? She said, I believe him. Okay. Um, and I would work with him anytime mm -hmm. again, uh, as far as like the sexual abuse allegations against him. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's the only one that has come out against this at all. Uh, surprising And are there move. new stuff with him, or is it just the same old bag of, bag I, of pedophile I don't know. Well, here, here was Woody Allen's story, right? Behind the fucking creepy weirdo, 
Uh, he is a genuine filmmaker at heart. He believes in writing and directing one movie a year, every single year, and seeing if the project ends up being great or not, right? Um, because he's a filmmaker. And I think if you have the ability to do that and you can get financing, it's an amazing, awesome thing. The problem is it's really hard to get financing for all of that. Because, uh, look, the, some of these movies are very hit and miss. Some do well. Others tank horrifically. If you were a financer, you might as well toss a fucking coin to whether or not you're going to make any money back off of this, right? Mm -hmm. I think with him and this whole sitch that he's gone through now and he's not been making films because nobody's, nobody's going to finance his fucking bullshit anymore. Um, I think with him, man, I think he... He misses it. I think Scarlett Johansson had some great projects with him. Like, um, but to me, you can never come back after marrying your stepdaughter. And, countless, and I was surprised that it went other, along this long. Countless other allegations on top of that. I, you know, it's funny. I don't know. I don't actually know the other allegations. From I, his daughter or son? Uh, well, his son said some ro yeah. Ronan. Yeah, but it's the daughter that was saying that he... Gotcha. Well, look, he married the stepdaughter. I was checked out after that, so I don't really give a shit anyways about Woody Allen. Um, but I was surprised that Scarlett Johansson, who, and this, this stat will really, really shock you. She is the highest grossing film actress of all time. Because um, of the Marvel shit? Yes, because of the Avengers movies. That's cheating. That's what I say. Yeah, you can't put those in there. But whatever. She's whatever. got a spinoff in the works for uh, the Avengers uh, she's got a, a other big, two other big projects. So what's the in message? The works. My well, no. Here, so here's the thing: to come out and say this now, with all of the shit you have potentially going, mm -hmm. you could literally be throwing away forty, fifty million dollars with the projects she has coming up. Right. That's pretty ballsy to stick your tits out there for this guy like right. that. Um, in a time where it is not popular, and she is getting raked today um, for it. But uh, she. So here's the problematic <laughs> message that that happens with people like Michael Jackson and Woody Allen, who are, according to a lot of people, very talented, right? Insanely talented. People love them. Look. So the message is, if you're that talented and right. people like you enough, eh. eh Roman Polanski's still. You know what prison. I mean? Eh. Yeah. Like, you can do kind of whatever you want is the message here. Mm. Uh, and it was supposed to be underlying, but Scarlett Johansson is now bringing that to the forefront. Right. Right. She also said uh, in this article uh, today that, this is The Hollywood Reporter, she also said she was uh, all in for Elizabeth Warren. Which uh, I think that's the first kind of celebrity that's really thrown her out there. I thought she was Marianne. To no. be honest with you, I thought I saw her on yeah, the Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look, I read a piece on Marianne today, too, uh, ironically, that you brought up. And um, she just came out and said, look, because they're, you know, oh, they're trying they're to get down. down yeah. They're trying to, they're, they're whittling this down. And she hasn't made the podium yet. Uh, there's still time. You've got to get like a signatures and some money and some other fucking bullshit, well, right? People have to drop out, which they are doing. Well, she's not in yet, right? Um, her comments today was, she was like, I'm going to be honest with you. This is a direct quote. I did not think the left was so mean. And it was like, hey, man, um, you kind of had to see that back in the Hillary days, right? Like, you, you would have been killed if you ran against her yeah. in the last election. Um, mm -hmm. Literally killed. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not numbers oh, wise and votes, yeah, just probably yeah, your body yeah, would end up yeah. in a river somewhere. Yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome to that lady. Um, I didn't realize the left was so, so mean, mean. Imagine if she gets on. The, so after these comments today, mm -hmm. imagine if she is able to sneak up on this stage. I don't think she'll give a fuck. I don't think she will either, but, uh, she will set fire to the rain out so far because it is a lot. It's a, it's a lot of people. I mean, look, yeah. they announced who has made the, the second debates and actually we'll be on the cruise for this and we won't be able to watch it. Um, but of, the, of that debate. Yeah. Oh, dang. I know. Um, and they, they said don't have that, TV on cruises. Uh, so what's that? 
They don't have TV on cruises. It's like movie channels and shit. Look, they could. I don't. Look, it's been a while since I've been on a cruise. Um, I will not be going. Um, <laughs> <laughs> not cool. <laughs> not cool. So look, uh, we got uh, obviously uh, Warren. Yep. We got uh, Biden. We got Bernie, Burn Dog. Um, Andrew Yang made it. Surprised by that, that he made it. Why? I don't know. I mean, he, people like him, but he's really only said one thing over and over and over again in both of those debates, whereas I'm going to give everyone $5,000 and you can do whatever you want with it and build a thing. But like, he doesn't have any plans as far as like, you know, foreign policy or anything else. So uh, I don't, I, look, I guess money and signatures and something else. I think he was pulling that high, to be honest with you. I thought I would have thought she was. Because of the Oprah endorsement and Kim Kardashian and all that shit. Yeah. I would have thought she would be in. But, uh, yeah. Um, so, Hickenlooper dropped out. Yep. Um, Solwell. Swalwell. Yep. Uh, Kirsten uh, Gillibrand. Gillibrand. Yeah. And even that one with Gillibrand, Trump was like, man, I'm going to be realsies with you. The one person who scared me out of the Democrats was her. And he sent another tweet about it. And he just said, hey, man, that was the one person I was worried about. And I thought you ran a good race. And I'm sorry to see you go. And it was, it was a nice tweet. And I was like, holy shit. What about Hawaiian gal? What about She's gone. Gone. Tulsi Gabbard is out as well. Dropped out? I, I, again, you have to have enough money and signatures and, and some polling numbers, whatever they're using. And like, you know, I, I don't follow it. But uh, Kamala Harris is in. Cory Booker is in. Andrew Yang is in. Um, so, you know, I, I, there's time that she might sneak in. Uh, if you get, get enough signatures and all that shit, Beto is in still somehow. I don't know how, um, but he's in. And uh, you're going to hear his fucking bullshit again. So I was guys, excited to see this one. Guys. Yeah. Ask him any question. Well, yeah. I'm sad, and so <laughs> you're like, why does it have to be so fucking sad all the time? Because he's sad boy fault. Like he is the definition of sad boy fault. Definition pale. Yeah, sad boy fall is pale. Him, man. <laughs> I like how the pale, basically yeah. skinny, pale, sad. All he wants to do is just cuddle up on his couch, in his fucking huge house. Uh, Julian Castro um, is in or out? Is out. It looks like. Mm. And they said he seems more like a vice presidential pick of Elizabeth Warren. Should she win? Who is it that dropped Man. out but said that they would? Oh no, never mind. Yeah, I I don't know, man. It's tough. Biden. They've showed a bunch of his recent appearances. He just does not seem to, to have it it anymore. Um, Bernie's still able to yell at people all day long. And it seems like the same Bernie, just, you know, three years older and three years angrier. Um, Elizabeth Again, Warren, same thing, where it's just like, all right. The thing with Joe Rogan, if we could somehow get every candidate to do, or whatever. If, oh, to go on a Rogan? On a Rogan, like, it was so... Not that I agree with anything, but it really was a platform for him to platform to, for him to explain in yep. depth where all of his ideas came from and mm -hmm. what they're. You know what I'm saying? I, I felt the same way about Mitt Romney's Netflix special. Exactly, when he and lost you just think, 12. why don't these people with this huge amount of money for campaigns, right? Right. Uh, do that kind of Mitt Romney documentary, right, on yeah, the yeah. trail and the whatever, yeah, yeah. put it together before any kind of voting or any big situation like that? Mm -hmm. Are they that tone deaf to what people are really responding to? <laughs> Documentaries, Joe Rogan. Are they that tone deaf to that? Or they're just like, oh, that there's no way that would work. I think the problem is the candidates are so old 
it doesn't really register to do shit like that. Whereas, yeah, but their people must be younger, right? Like they're not, they don't. It's not just a bunch of eighty year olds trying to figure out how to. I don't know. Whereas Beto is is trying that, so he's been actively trying. And that he with, did do one, by the way, which made him look even worse. Yes, and that and was think, a good thing. But I think that's the that's the the worry is like, hey man, if these people do it, you might I'm look worse as than you are. In an American citizen, I would love to get a real in depth because after the Beto running with Beto documentary, you just go, what the fuck, dude? No way. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they probably learned from that. I, I do believe you on that, but w the Mitt Romney one, it was just like, I'm like, why did I not see this before? Yeah. I love him. Yeah. As a person. I don't he really seemed know. He seemed cool as a, as a person after that doc, but, uh, Yeah. Yeah, uh, we get some sponsors to pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. Um, that storm tracker's name, by the way, was Josh uh, Morgerman. Um, oh yeah, the famous what? The famous Josh Morgerman. Uh huh. Yeah, everyone know. Everyone so, knew that. So. If you see his picture, everyone you'll know exactly knew. who this guy is. Where you're just like, oh, all right, Fine. cool. Um, but you don't know him by name. For sure. Josh what? Morgerman. Barkin American. My boy, whooping, stepping. Morgan Mayor? Scoppin' lippin'. Morgerman? Uh, Frookin' namin'. Uh, Morgerman. <laughs> it's a mouthful, James. You know what it is in a mouthful, mm -hmm. though? I don't recognize him. Go Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. It eases right off my tongue, right into the ear holes of everyone listening. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros is the finest mattresses on the planet Earth. Um, maybe Mars. We don't know because they ship everywhere. So, can we bring a twin on the cruise? Probably not. Jace. Okay. Once Probably again, no nuts. TV, no ghost bed. I will not be attending, guys. <laughs> and I'm sure you're so bummed. <laughs> Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros has got pillows, pillows. They got sheets, adjustable bases. Everything you need for a good night's sleep. I'm I'm spicing it up today, James. Whatever you're doing. Feeling hot today. Whatever you're doing. The winds are blowing outside. And I'm ready for some hot cocoa. Nope, that's the wrong thing. Uh that is snow, definitely not a hurricane. Uh ghostbed.com forward slash drinker bros. As always, gives uh fifteen percent off to military and first responder. Uh are you just checking your dome? I just got like a hurt. Yeah, Could in be there. A tumor, I think. Yeah, probably, probably gonna die on air. Ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros, as always, is giving you interest free for 36 months. Pay as you go. No one on the internet is doing that. Next up, we got strikeforceenergy.com. Boom, 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 boom. Shabloinkers. Shabloinkers. Uh, you taking some of that hurricane party? What am I taking? Strike Force, the neighbor neighborhood. Uh, I think I should. Yeah, there is a uh, a dad that's going to be grilling under an umbrella. Are you kidding? In the hurricane. Who is it? Nick. That's fucking awesome. Yeah. Oh, bring me back something. Bring well, me a plate. I will not be able to do that. I feel like I'm uh, uh, Trey, in Boys in the Hood. You know, or Lawrence Fishburne. Just bring me back a plate, Trey. All right. Why? Because you're going to be working. Yeah. Just bring yeah. me back a plate. Throw, I'll throw make you a plate. Little, uh, yeah, yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I'll make you a plate. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Uh, don't hurt yourself and go to strikeforceenergy.com. Stay awake, alert, sharp. Uh, four amazing flavors orange, original, grape, and lemon. Uh, it's a tasty, tiny little tin pouch that squeezes open and, and goes into every liquid available. Oh, that's real nice. Uh, go to strikeforceenergy.com. No carbs or sugars, and it lasts longer than five hour energy. Uh, strikeforceenergy.com, promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. Next up, we've got straightrazors.com. Jabes, why don't you tell us about it? Ooh, that's a clean cut. Smooth. Oh, you right? Like Ooh, Jabes. Been a while. Been a while. Is that Aaron like Lewis? It. What? It's Aaron Lewis. That's stained. Stained, yeah. Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little stained. It's on my cringy, my list of cringy songs that at one point in my life I liked. I know, me too. And when I think about liking it, it I, makes me 
sick. Here's the thing, man. I've had people come up to me and be like, I'm a huge Aaron Lewis fan. And I'm just like, ooh. But I think he's doing different stuff. I Is think he? he's like country or something now. I can't remember, but it's not because of Stained. They like him separately. Got it. Got, got, it, got it. it. Uh, either or, man. Stained. Uh, straightrazors.com will leave you unstained. You can shave it right off your face. You get a stain, shave it off your face. Oh. Yeah. Your dad ever told you that? No. You get a stain on your face once you shave it off. Why would my dad tell me that? Uh, my dad did as, as, a, as a boy. But as a girl, should I shave? Sure. Shave it off your face. You get, yeah, a, no, you get a stain on your leg. Shave it off. Yeah, my dad never told me that. Okay. Well, maybe we should call him on air. Jamie, can you, you patch in Jesse's dad and put him on air? That would be great. He doesn't like to be on the grid. So That's he right. will not answer. No. No, he doesn't. Um, he doesn't want his voice or he's a db cooper likeness he's a he's a db cooper he's an off the grid guy he's an off the gritter yeah, cutting he, the cord he could disappear he could absolutely disappear and be uh, his favorite totally fine quote is they get you coming and going very ah. into any conspiracy of people listening to you watching you yep yep no i get it very into all of that now what does that have to do with a straight razor uh, Nothing. Go your, ahead. It's your father, and uh, you, should, you, you, you should call him and then ask him why he never said to you as a small girl, shave that stain off you. Yeah. Just shave it off your, uh, your thing. I'll add it to the list of stuff to do, bud. What else you got <laughs> on the... Anyway, everything you need to be a real man in this life, go to straightrazors.com, promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Jobless. 20% off. 20% of 20% Real quick in documentary corner. Whoa. That just popped up out of nowhere. What do you got in the doc corner? The Amazing Jonathan. The Untitled Amazing Jonathan doc. So. What you got? Oh, I got a, by our uh, guest on the show, Steve Byrne. Okay. Um, did that doc on Drinking Bros. He talked about it on Drinking Bros doing that doc. And um, he's been promoting it for a while now. How is it? I didn't see him in there. Uh, really? Yeah. I think he maybe produced it or got financing for it or something, but he, he talked about it on Drinking Bros podcast. Okay. Yeah. Um, What's his name? Steve Byrne. Do you, Steve Byrne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, I'm not sure what he had to do with it, and there may have been a couple. So how was it? The one that I saw, Untitled Amazing Jonathan documentary on Hulu was really good it was really interesting okay um so he's dying right so you know the whole story of him he right. got like a year to live three years ago and continues to smoke crack yes daily yeah yeah, yeah, yeah on yeah. camera yeah yeah yep yep um and you know puts on a wig and tries to do the the stuff still um it's hard to explain all the different roads that they take in this documentary as far as like, you know, in a documentary, you want something to present itself, right? Sure. Like if someone dies, eh, that would be great, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if Jonathan died during the documentary, they yeah. jackpot. So something like that. So eat, they, there were different things that were presenting themselves okay. in this documentary and they kind of took different avenues really interesting i'm not going to spoil like the different ways that they went but i thought it was really good um what tell me why tell me why and then i'll tell you what steve said why um, i thought it was good yeah well, i guess i don't know how do i do it without spoiling it I thought the guy that made it was really good. I thought the twists and turns that they did at the end were really good. So the whole premise of this one, I'll just uh -huh. say. So the main guy that's making it, Ben Berman. Yes. Um, is doing the documentary. About a quarter of the way, halfway through, you find out that the amazing Jonathan actually has three other crews doing documentaries on him and allowed them access together because this guy's a just kind of a fucking dick to be honest really what i got from the whole thing is okay the amazing jonathan is kind of a piece of shit right right um and so he he kept granting all anyone who asked to do a documentary on him he said yep sure so all all the cameras mm -hmm. different crews mm -hmm. 
had to like <laughs> stay out of the way of the other crew and some of them would be granted certain access or he would call one crew and not call the other and they all had so it ended up turning into a Ben Berman documentary because at some point he has to just be like dude this is like making me feel super insecure like I'm getting like pushed out of my you know okay like, so this explains a lot for me okay, okay. you ready all right was it called always amazing no great steve byrne directed and produced the documentary always amazing okay. which is out now he okay. was on the, the show true story in life okay okay he was on the show promoting that movie when he was here um and i believe that one is actually on netflix okay so the other one is on hulu is what you're saying yes Wow. That, it's kind of like the Firefest Fest sitch then, right? Which? Where there was two docs. One ended up on Hulu, one ended up on Netflix, and some people watched both. Yeah, I, maybe, yeah. And so, it's sort of like, fuck you for saying that. Like, it feels like when you, and I guess there's no rules. Like, if the subject says everyone free for all make a documentary on me there's no no because you just have to re uh, release forms that's it yes um, so he basically granted access and release forms and kind of was just like may the best doc win yeah and they were all like pissed at each other right so steve directed and produced the other one that is out now on netflix and that's what he was promoting um it, but okay. this one and did he have did he have amazing jonathan in it yes okay so the other one is all him. Um, like but, he's the, the access that they got to him was, was pretty. Incredible. So when he was on drinking bros, uh, cause Bill Burr produced it with him. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Mike so. Bertonlia or Ber Bertolina. Mm -hmm. I'm pronouncing that wrong. Um, yeah. Steve Byrne, uh, Melissa Verdugo and, uh, there's a bunch of people in it. It was uh, Copperfield was in it. David Copperfield, obviously, cause they're in Vegas. Penn Jillette, um, and then the, the other people I don't know, but... Um, yeah, so theirs was released... When was theirs released? The Amazing Jonathan one. 2019, as well as... So they were probably in, all in competition together, yeah. ra racing through an edit and then putting yeah. them out, right? I'm going to repeat a story that I told on Drinking Bros podcast in case you don't listen to both shows, and it is about The Amazing Jonathan. So when Steve said he was doing all this, right? Um, and he was talking about him and what an amazing person he is and all of that shit. My very what an amazing person Jonathan is. Well, uh, just amazing of like great subject. Yes. Okay. Um, either way, uh, my very first acting class in, in LA, um, because as, as soon as I finished school, they said, look, you've got to stay acting, right? So sign up for a class as soon as you get there. And uh, a friend of a friend had said, you got to go to this one. Um, this is really intuitive. And the guy is, well, it was an old dude and his name was Vincent Chase. And if you know that name, it is because he, that's the lead character in Entourage. He was Mark Wahlberg's acting coach as well. And was he right by Rock and Ralph? Yes, correct. Right above the thing. And, and everybody knows him, knows right? Him or has been in him. and out of there at one point. Yeah. Um, my first day in there, uh, the guy who sat down next to me, I looked, I looked at him and I was like, Hey man, I, I apologize. But I was like, are you, are you the amazing Jonathan? And he goes, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, the, I'm the amazing Jonathan. I was like, Holy shit, man. I've seen your, you know, and at this point I'm just out of school. I'm just out of college. Right. And I'm like, dude, I saw you in Vegas with my parents in like high school or whatever it was, you know? And it, it's a hell of a show, by the way, if you haven't seen oh, yeah. the amazing Jonathan. No, it's really in good. his day. It was kind of, it was like Carrot Top before Carrot Top, and he was doing Is a lot of... Is it interesting for you now to think of how coked up he was? Well, or he was do doing coke on stage. I don't know if you well, saw that the, bit. it's a joke bit. Correct. But he was so spagacked. Correct. Yeah. So I said, what are you doing here? Because to me, if you're performing in Vegas every single night, and you've made a shit ton of money you're like that... Like, you've made you're like, you've set. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're good. Like, yeah. why are you in a fucking acting class with 22, 23-year-old kids mm -hmm. and uh and he goes I, I i gotta get out of vegas i gotta i gotta i gotta stop this and i was like what, what why what's going on he's like it's too much 
too many drugs, too many things. And he was super open and honest and like, I don't know him at all. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh shit. I was like, really? And I was like, I saw you doing it on stage during the thing or whatever. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's like that every night. Yeah. Cause you just wait, you know, you do shows and he says, you go out and party all night and then boom, you wake up at five o'clock in the afternoon. You get ready for the next show that next night. And you know, they pay for everything. You're in a penthouse in mm-hmm. Vegas. You're in a suite room service. They'll clean your room. Like you're kind of a, a child that, Vegas is taking care of and you're making this money but you're not really spending it um because you're because they're still taking they're care comping of you yeah, yeah the yeah. hotel comps you for all your shit yeah so um when I had the, that conversation with him I was like man I don't know how the amazing Jonathan could just suddenly not be the amazing Jonathan anymore because to me he was too famous at that point yeah yeah so to just be a normal actor you know or go into whatever it is um and he stayed for a few classes and then bounced. I don't know what happened to him after that, but uh, that was my one run in with him. He was a pretty good guy, and to me at least, he's surprisingly he. The cool thing about him him is he's very open. Yes. So, so anytime anyone asks him anything, interview wise, he's done Marin. He'll just. I mean, he literally will tell you everything, all the drugs he's done all the drugs he's currently on and doing how many times he smokes crack and how crazy it is and like yeah he's very open about it so he seems to be the perfect subject for a documentary so did you 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 enjoyed it though it was the final yeah and it was it was well made and it was a it was a good documentary okay i got it now i'm gonna watch steve's now um yeah i need to see his now too because i'm sure it must be is the point when steve was on our show we we were doing a million things and the book was coming out and like I haven't watched or listened to anything unless it's like a half hour you know mm-hmm. we can sit down for the righteous gem sounds and that's about it these yeah. days right now um, yeah. because of how busy the schedule is but yeah with amazing Jonathan uh, super weird man that's wild and um, so because he's gonna die right I mean I don't know <laughs> I guess he is but they did touch on like in the in the documentary that I saw the untitled amazing Jonathan um they did touch on like hey are you like really dying or is this a is this a bit bit because he does do some Kaufman-esque bits sometimes yeah 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 yeah. and you know he blows up and fucking you know fires them all and throws a fit in his house and stuff over it which did it seem real the best way to show that you're not lying right (laughs) it's pretty much what kids do yeah but uh yeah, I don't know. Did it seem real to you? Um, that he was really dying or yeah. that? Uh, uh, well, the anger and all that stuff. No, or did it I seem think it's staged? a really good. It's a really good excuse to sit around and do drugs. Got it. And to be granted access that you weren't granted before for stuff because people are like, well, he's dying. Like, dude, that, that guy was given a year to live. Like, invite him. Man. I don't know the answer, to be honest with you. I don't either, but I do know in the documentary he was doing smoking crack. Phys- like physical crack. and then yeah, Physically smoking crack, which is probably like, and meth. Oh, God. Which is the craziest stuff to do, right? But he never even seemed that, like he is so, he needs it at this point, like a little bit throughout the day to just. I think you need it. Stay normal. I think so you that need adds it in Vegas doing those gigs, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, because the, the other one who was in that class was uh, this weird, like tatted up, like bunch of rings in his face, dude. From uh, and I was like, what's what's your such? Where are you coming from? Um, and he was coming from Cirque du Soleil out there, and he told me some fucking crazy stories about that too. And, I, and he goes, man, I got it. Same thing. He had the same story. He goes, I got to get out of it, man. Look, it's, it's too many drugs, too many things or whatever. And I was like, why? And he goes, man, if you miss on one of those fucking things, he was doing the motorcycles in the cage or whatever it was, mm-hmm. um, you know, all, he goes, if you miss, you're fucking dead. You so know, it wasn't Zoomanity? No, no, it wasn't. Yeah, where you're uh, uh, pressing dudes, dudes in your face. Uh. Balancing penises. Gosh, um, nothing I hate worse than Zoomanity. <laughs> you, and you went with your mom, didn't you? I did. And I would <laughs> lean over... I would lean over to her and be like, I can't believe you took me to this. I was like, mom, these guys' dicks are touching. She's like, 
shush. Yeah. Be quiet. She was like, look, look at the strength and the magic of it. And I was like, no, like, they look, are. Mom, I'm looking. That is two gay men who have figured I'm out how looking, to get mom. paid for being shredded and gay. Right. And uh, congratulations for them. But that is, this is really not something that's. Look, I lived in Vegas for a little while. And the way that I describe it is, you know, when you go to, to Vegas for three days. Yeah. You know, that third day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I extended that. For five months. A year. Oh, God. But do you know what I mean? Where it's like that day where you're just like, this is too, it's I, too much. I yeah. ha- like that feeling that you have in Vegas where you're just like, I have to go. I have to go. Those days that you like change the flight to earlier and you're, I have to get out of here. Right. That's how I felt. I think it, I think it has changed now. Um, so many people are Depends. doing re- yeah, residency. So. What's that? I think it depends on the person, but yeah. Yeah, well, I think so many people are doing residencies, and it's like, you know, they have a better setup for it now and all that shit. Like, uh, back in the day, I just think you were going so hard, and you had such access to shit and everything else, man. I think they've got it It was definitely more locked in now. less classy, if you can imagine that. Oh, yeah. So it was, it was a lot dirtier Yeah. when I was there, where it's like, now they get malls. Not, they have like Gucci stores, yeah. Prada. They have fucking Mastro's. Yeah. Like they, Mastro's was not there when no, I was there. You no. know what I mean? Uh, slots of fun. It used to was be our buffets. Jam. Buffets was mm-hmm. the big thing back in the day. And the uh, Peppercorn Cafe. Oh, the, the Peppercorn. Old, do, you, do you remember Peppercorn? No, I don't. It's a good one. Locals. All the strippers go You're there. You're a local. Yeah. yeah. But um, it's... It's cleaned up. They yeah. definitely blew up all the uh, old casinos Gone. for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. and put up nondescript. And I've always said this too. You know, like uh, New York, New York, where they have like Paris and everything. Yeah, they're gonna have to have a casino that is Vegas because nothing looks like Vegas anymore. Right. So they're gonna have to have like a fun like Vegas casino, and it's gonna have to look You're like right. how like, Vegas, like the old used, Vegas to. used to. Yeah, and that's gonna be like the fun place to stay. Yeah, because even the flamingo and all these things that you picture as Vegas are being blown up and uh, replaced with just a glass reflective. Yeah. <laughs> thing, and you're just like, what is that? I can't even see the name of it. Yeah, Aria or the right. Cosmopolitan, and they're all gonna all be the shit. Aria or yeah. Cosmopolitan, or even like Planet Hollywood is like it looks like. It could be anywhere in L.A., right? It's got an awesome mall in it. Yeah. Planet Hollywood? Oh, yeah. That's that where uh, Britney awesome? Spears was. She was at. She was there. Is that the mall that we always go to? Yeah. To grab a right shirt? Right across the street from, exactly. Grab right a from, shirt? Yeah. Uh, but, but you're right. Like hey, They're going to have to create something to give you that old magic back. Uh, because it's, it is gone in and it's changed. Fremont, did you ever go to, do you go, or have you gone to the Fremont where that is supposed to be the old Vegas? Even that is getting like remodeled with, uh, and that's like the hipster LA area now. Uh-huh. So it's all these like, you know, that's where, what's his name has his bar. Oh yeah. Tatum, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's all like kind of hipstery. Yeah. It's changing real estate's going up there too. Uh, we said we had two friends move there uh, recently: Derek Wyda and uh, Charlie Classic. Now lives oh, there. That's right. Yeah, uh, real estate's going them. up, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's great for them. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, like Charlie Classic. That's his. That's his destination. Oh yeah, that's where he should have been forever, probably. Yeah. Um, but he's there now. He's there now. Um, the dude perfect thing, by the way, we were talking about. Uh, I couldn't find that they were going to a paywall. You couldn't. No. I wonder if they're just grooming. Maybe. So we had a chat off air about Dude Perfect because that's the one thing that I think adults and children can all agree on, which is rad, and you can just leave it on in the background and watch trick shots, and it's fucking great. Um, and their personalities mesh together and all that stuff, and they're on YouTube. Production quality, they're just amazing. But Dude they were, Perfect. If they you were have kids, d- put it on. Be, be surprised at how... Uh, they just lock in. And it's not bad. No cursing, no what. And it, it, you don't feel bad about them watching it for some reason as well. But go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, well, this is relating to that. So YouTube just got popped uh, for a $170 million fine for violating children's pi- privacy vi- violations. How? Um, you know, fucking going through personal information and without their parents' consent and all that other shit. 
uh, I think we knew that all along. Mm -hmm. And I'm just assuming that they're trying to, advertising-wise, um, get these kids to buy all this shit. Mm -hmm. um, because, look, when we got, there was a can of Pringles on a Dude Perfect thing. And he was like, dude, I want the Dude Perfect chips. He calls them Dude Perfect chips now. He they're not even, even he Pringles anymore. He doesn't even anymore. know what Pringles The means. other kid on the toy box. Uh, Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, the dude Ryan. that is just an Asian kid who just opens up Christmas gifts all day. And he makes a gajillion dollars. Mm -hmm. um, his head is now on the boxes of the toys. Mm -hmm. So he you're just like, hey. line at, at Walmart. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man, they got popped for 170 million. Not shocking whatsoever. Somebody sent that in to me and I was just like, eh. Obviously. We're all being spied on for every single thing we do now. And that's mm -hmm. it. So mm -hmm. uh, who, to the listener that sent this in. I'm not surprised does it suck, yeah, but what at this point uh, I've given in to the robots exactly like Jables has, has now. So I wanted to say I'm sorry to you, Jesse, and oh. now I am on your side. <laughs> I'm on your side with that, and I've given in to, great, they can hear us, and they're Absolutely, right knowing. now. Right now there's some app that I accidentally yep. enabled the microphone, and they're listening to me now. 100%. And if they are, I'm in the market. For a new rug. So send me some good deals. And I'm cool with it. Yeah. Have it pop up on the side of my computer right now. I was talking about uh, getting a new pair of shoes. Boom, that popped up that night from Blammo. Adidas. Like, hey, right in my grill. And I was like, oh, And you shit. got it. I got them. I bought them. So, Fucking yes. Fucking worked, It dude. worked. It 100% worked. All the targeting on Instagram, by the way, it, for me, This works. one showed up in my, my Facebook feed. Oh, okay. Right in the heart of my Facebook feed. And I was like, oh. Fuck, I do it on Instagram because it's so easy to just press shop now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You just swipe it and it goes yeah. right to the thing yeah. for you. Oof. I know. And uh, they're targeting me with uh, Amazon on Instagram now, too. Really? Yeah. Which, uh, which products? Uh, just anything that related to what I've looked at before. Okay. So here's where I'm being targeted uh, is Ohio State products. A lot of mm. those, obviously. Flip through how'd they find that out yeah you keep it so secret i know i know you keep it so under wraps <laughs> that you like ohio state i don't know here's the thing though and i'll i'll tell the audience this i thumb through them every time i don't oh, think yeah. i ever pass one and maybe i'm like maybe there's something new no we're the perfect uh people to target because yeah. we absolutely will click and sometimes buy exactly what you yes put up there yes 100 percent. yeah uh, and to adidas you you won i bought i bought those fucking shoes and you like them i love them they're great. They were like 65 bucks. I couldn't believe it. I was like, way to go, Adidas. You fucking did it, dude. You dirty SOBs. You fucker. Yeah. Way to go. Way to go, Adidas. Uh, Adele is coming back, Jabes. Oh, tear. We talked about Posty. Um, new album coming out. Yes. On the 6th. Um, Adele is supposed to have new music by the holidays, which... Not a surprise. That's oh, the, because she got divorced, right? Yes. Oh, my gosh. This album's going to be amazing. So she's on the cover of People today, and um, she says she's perky as hell after a difficult divorce oh. <laughs> and itching to share new music with fans and all of that shit. She's perky um, and itching. Huh? I think this. I think she probably has been sitting on this music, but the divorce prevented her from putting it out. She was probably like, I'm going to shelve this because I don't want that fucker getting half of this, too. They didn't have a prenup. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, easily the, one and of the most... And they have kids, so it's like... Unattractive men out there probably got close to $150 million just for marrying Adele. And, and he knew that. She was probably sitting on that album saying... He Look. looked like the kind of guy that knew that. That thought that in his mind as he was marrying her. He did it. He, he did it, man. Yes. Simon Konecki is his name. And he was the one guy that actually took our advice. We said, look, man, if you get a shot at Adele, you marry her, put a, put a little baby inside of her, and then just hang on and let that train go around the tracks until you get spit off. You right. Know? So. You got spit off, man. And the weird thing was, is he always seemed like put off by her and like, you know, kind of aloof at all these events and shit. I would have been cheering like a motherfucker. I mean, just... Uh, uh, oh my god every time she said hello i would fucking wave back from the crowd like right. i would wave be to everyone yes dude. turning around i'd be all in for all of her everyone. shit you bet dude yeah she was saying hello to me not to mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. fuck stick you know i'd have the kids out there with those giant 
headphones on. Oh, yeah. You know, when they take babies out to rock concerts that are children of the band and they're wearing those huge headphones to block out their, the deafness that would creep in. That would crush which their is tiny ultimately, ears. Ultimately, yeah, ultimately going to happen. It's just not going to happen right then. No, but I'd, I'd be front and center with the kids and the whole thing, man. Whatever she needed, I would have been there for. Uh, but maybe Homeboy just said, look, eh, 150 so is a good he, number to walk away from. Yeah. And I'm, I'm good with this. Because he could have dragged this out probably and got a, got a piece of this album or just pushed it a little yeah. bit, you know? Uh, but I guarantee you the, the label was probably like, hey, man, wrap this up. The highest album sales are right around the holidays. So if you can throw in a couple bangers on this. That would be great. Splendid. You'll sell more than Taylor Swift did last week. Um, because, but let's, let's, let's be realsies here. Uh, Adele's the best in the world. Yeah. The best to ever do it. Yep. Um, Voice wise, for sure. Yeah. I, you know, it's a lot of people say Beyonce, but not a, not a prayer on this one. Not a prayer on this one. Adele's mm. got her. Uh, speaking of Beyonce, it's Bay Day. Jabes, it's her birthday. Uh, How good. old do you think she was? I was surprised at this number. 40. 38. She's 38. Did you think she was older or younger? Yes, I did. I just felt like she's been around yeah. in, in our lives for like 25 years. And I'm like, man, she's got to be like 45. I wanted her to be older because I hate, because she's accomplished so much. Yeah. I wanted her to be older because then it just makes you feel bad about yourself. It's a weird thing when people are super successful at a, at a, at a younger age than you are. And then you have to reconcile with with that thought of oh my god man i'm a fucking loser yeah. and yeah. so and so did whatever um obviously i'm not anymore because i'm a new york times best-selling author so I don't, I don't have that um you are yeah um and it, that's not even uh like a thing that i even think about anymore which is great and that's a like, huge weight off my back but i'm sure there's a lot of people out <laughs> yeah no i mean i don't have a any accomplishments so it's like People hit me up when I named the last episode New York Times bestselling author Ross Patterson. That way it always came up in like SEO and shit like that. Like, <laughs> congratulations. Just in case you forgot, you fuck you. You fuck? Um, it, it, it's, uh, it always makes me laugh. But uh, yeah, fucking Adele, man. I'll be, I'm a, I'm a day one Adele listener. Like if that drops day one, I'm in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure there'll be a banger of a single before that. Oh, sure. It'd be awesome if it, if it was just goodbye and it was just about Her saying songs, goodbye to this fucking dude. Yeah. That last song was so good. I wanted us to get a divorce so I could like listen to it and really feel it. Feel Do you it, know yeah. what I mean? Yep. That's how good her songs are. Yeah. And I'm sure there'll be one in this one where yeah. I will feel the same way. And that I'm you want to... Yeah, yeah, that you want to <laughs> get a divorce to enjoy the song Just better. Just so that you can really, like, you want to feel the exact way that she's feeling, right? Yep, yep. Um, no, I understand that. And maybe I can make that happen for you, you know? Um, <laughs> no, I knew it. Once you got that fucking New York Times You got to hold on, James. The train has left the station. My coattails doot, are fucking doot. Chugga, 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 chugga. Doot, doot. Oh, it's a train. Oh, it's a train. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Oh, <laughs> it's, a, it's a train, James. Um, that is a choo-choo train that I am doing, and uh, right, it is right, right, left the, the station. station. Um, <laughs> do you have a crime corner for us? What? Come on. I do. Crime corner. Crime corner. Crime corner. <laughs> All right, this is from Detective Keith Miller. Good job, mm. Keith. I'm going to need a picture of this person as well. Up. Of Keith Miller? Nope. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. No, definitely not. The, the, uh, <laughs> any of our listeners, keep them off the show. Keep no, them off the video show. You nah, can that's if fine. you want to. It's fine. Uh, just fine. a name Put shout Keith out is up fine. Now. Yeah. Nope. Put Keith up now. No, it's too late. A lot of Keith Millers out there. So, Keith, you're up. Good for you. Oh, boy. And now, <laughs> move over Florida, man. Florida woman Ooh. 
pulls a gator from her pants during a, a Fort Myers traffic stop. Ah, okay. Fo- a foot long. Oh, a foot long. <laughs> foot long gator out of her jeans. Yeah. Um, Where was it? I should, in her pants. What do you mean? It wasn't on the inside? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. It was like in her pants. Like. Always got to check that extra purse down there. I didn't know if she was pulling it out of that. Do you think a foot long alligator can fit up a vagina i just want to know your i your knowledge of anatomy well look i i am not a doctor i've played one uh in a, in a film anyways it can't so uh um, it could fit a it could it could keister it could be keistered it couldn't be keistered you yeah. couldn't keister a foot long gator up your up your anus you can actually i don't want to like say that i know more about butt stuff than you do but i do okay because you've put a gator up there? Or? No, I just know that s- s- longer things can fit. Okay. I think if, you, uh, if you tape the beak up and then put some over the eyes, you know, so they couldn't see. You don't even have to do that, right? Slide it right in, right? Right, Dan. It's going to open You don't up. even have to do that. Don't mm-hmm. ask someone off camera uh, who's not your friend. Uh, I think he's not my friend. He's your friend. I think we're not going to play that game. I think you can tape up the beak and the eyes and then kind of jam it right in there. But go ahead. Go ahead. All right, so this story isn't even like that. Oh, sorry It isn't sorry even about that. about that. Sorry, sorry. Was, he, was she saving the alligator? If so, I feel really no, bad. No, it's a, it's, a, it's a twisting, turning story. Okay. And I have more questions than answers, really, ah. at the end of this. Well, you always do. But the Florida woman who pulled a foot-long alligator from her pants during a traffic stop in May also had 40 turtles... In a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle backpack <laughs> <laughs> in the car as well, oh she pleaded no contest God. to multiple charges uh, on Wednesday. What, so, what were the charges for the turtles too? She get charged for those? She was a passenger in a pickup uh, pulled over for failure to stop for a stop sign, okay. which is like targeting. Come on. Yeah. Uh, oh, so I do need a picture of this lady because I'm she not black? sure. No, I just. Why did you say targeting? Oh, just, I mean, she didn't stop at a stop sign. Like, that means you want to stop them for other things, but you're just trying to find something else. Uh, uh, look, you roll through a stop. It's like a brake light. Stop, it's like yeah. you don't have to pull them over for like brake light, but if you want to check if they're drunk or something, you, you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm saying. But uh, so she was the passenger in this pickup and the driver uh, told deputies that he and the lady had been trying to collect frogs and snakes from a nearby underpass. Okay. So they found, they got them out of the truck. They found 42 striped mud turtles and a soft shell turtle, which blammo, what's that? Yeah, I know exactly what that that is. Is that still a turtle? Floppy. Real floppy, like a floppy disk. Soft shell? Yep. Real wet, floppy. I talked about the, uh, the albino Anyways, turtle. And then I they saw. said, do you have anything else? And that's when she pulled the gator out, out of her, of her jeans. pants. Because they thought it was just the turtles. Right. And they were appalled at that. And then blammo. She had the gator on him. Gator came out of the pants. Now, I think when they ask you to get out of the car, I would have waited for that and then let the cop discover the gator in, the, in your pants. I think that's what happened. Oh, you don't so think she, like, she, she didn't voluntarily pull it out? I don't think it looked like they were searching and they found, like I said, they found the <laughs> turtles first. <laughs> and I don't know what made them look in the Ninja Turtles backpack. Probably a movement. Drugs. A lot of movement. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, 40 turtles is a lot for a backpack of that size. Yeah. Yeah. Baby turtles probably, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, one count of taking or possessing more than one turtle per day, which I guess is the rule I didn't oh, know. I didn't know that either. Uh, and one count of transporting more than one turtle or turtle egg, and one count of taking or possessing a soft shell turtle. That's in a separate count. Yep. Again, I'm not sure what's up with the soft shell. Floppy. Turtle, and why that holds a, a, a separate charge. It, they're, they are very rare. Soft shell turtles are very rare. Oh, okay. So... Um, that is probably on, on one of those endangered species lists where they're like, look, you can't just pull one of these fuckers out of a pond and take it home. We, we hope that there's more one day. Yeah. So nothing about the gator, though, in the jeans. No, no count for that? 
Uh, oh yeah, one count for uh, possessing possessing an American alligator. So you can't possess that on your person. Could mm-hmm. you just have it in your car? I wonder. No, you can't. Oh man, didn't yeah. know that. I I tried to do that in Louisiana. What did you try and do? Try to take a fucking gator with me, dude. And if you'd got pulled over, yeah. you would have gotten in trouble. I, my, my fraternity brother you took one. You can't do he anything to gators. They're like protected, right? He got one back, man. He got one back on a on a thing, and then I uh, lived in our fraternity for like a year. He had a fucking baby gator, and it bit his nipple off. Okay, but you completely know, wasted, bit his fucking nipple off, dude. You know, the thing I don't kept know. growing and getting bigger, and it was like, hey, man, it's a fucking gator, man. Uh, yep. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm gonna have to. I mean, that's not legal. None of that is legal. What you just said. It seemed like it. So you just, but you were white guys in a frat. You weren't before nine eleven too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm probably gonna say this uh, before we get off the air. Nine eleven probably had a lot to do with this alligator thing too. With her. Just possessing it, you know. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like the terrorist one and that whole fucking thing, the TSA with alligators, all of it. Um, time consuming, huh? Anywho. Uh, let's get to the revolutionary figure of the day, shall, shall we, James? We shall. <laughs> um, this one's going out to uh, Ohio State alum, the Ohio State University uh, alum. Dan and I will be uh, at the Dallas Cowboys game. Uh, Ezekiel Elliott. Um, man, I don't know where to go with this one because he is a great football player. However, he is just a cocksucker off the field. Is he? He is. And just continuously makes the wrong decisions. He just signed the highest contract uh, of all time for a running back. Six years, $90 million for Ezekiel Elliott. Um, look, he's one of, my, one of my favorite players, and I got to meet him in Dallas. And uh, I just hope he keeps it together. Right. That's all. But for him to be the highest running back paid of all time is pretty, uh, pretty phenomenal. Um, those guys get hurt. I wouldn't, I wouldn't shell out that kind of cash. But Hey, man, they did. And just in time for D'Anthony and I to see him. This, today was the cutoff day mm-hmm. where he had to practice today to get ready for the game. Uh, just in time for D'Anthony and I to see him in Dallas this Sunday against the Giants. So that at least also warms my heart. Sure. Uh, for Jesse Wiseman, a.k.a. the Jables, I'm Ross Patterson. Watch out for your alligators. Good night. Good night. <laughs> what, what was the look for? What, was, what does that mean, watch out for Watch out for your alligators. I'm just saying, take them or stash them. Hide them better. Don't, don't put them in your fucking jeans. That's what I'm saying. Good night. Good night.